everyone. I'm really excited to share something with you. You know, I've been very slim at putting up videos lately, but um, I did try to make a video a couple weeks ago and then I never did. And it's a good thing because <laughs> um, grab a cup of tea, put it on audio, listen to it on the way to work or sit down and relax and you can watch the silly things that I decide to put on the screen through the process. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, spread the word. So the first one I was going to make a couple weeks ago was in reference to a short, quick dream I had about putting on a belt. And that's all I was doing was I was putting on a brown leather like double banded belt around my waist and then that was it and so that reminded me of a long time ago some of the first videos I made was on putting on the armor of God and it got me into contemplating you know and in the back of my mind previous to this dream I was contemplating the belt of truth how it's the first thing that we put on is the belt of truth and um, so how important that is because we can't we can't the rest of the armor doesn't work if we don't know the truth we don't even know what to fight if we don't know the truth and the truth is the Word of God and it was just kind of a simple I was going to do encouragement reminder and I didn't get into it and time took away and you know responsibilities and stuff and then last week I had another dream and this was like kind of a scary dream in a way I mean it just left me it you know have you ever had a dream where it feels real and you you feel all the emotions that you would in real life in your dream and this one was I was engulfed by the sea and it was a quick dream so I was swimming in the sea with someone which there's always a person in my dreams but I never see and I call it a him or talk to him so I have assumed and figured out maybe a while ago that so it's probably like my angel when I have dreams and visions there's my angel is there with me <laughs> you know I believe that we have our little angels and you know they're to watch over and protect us and guide us or whatever but they can't interfere if you know what I mean anyway I don't understand all that and I don't have scripture to back it up so the sea suddenly started getting really rough so I was just swimming it was but all of a sudden it started getting rough and a large wave came up near us huge like a hundred feet or something it was really tall like a tsunami it was huge and it came suddenly and we were already in the sea like this angel was far away from me this person but I knew there was a person there with me and I did there was no time to get out interesting so when the wave started to crash down it engulfed us and dragged us down deeper into the ocean However, there seemed to be something like a big bubble that remained in the midst of the rumbling and tumbling of the waters. If you imagine a wave coming down and crashing and you're kind of get stuck in that middle and get dragged down, but it creates like this circle. Um, I couldn't see the bubble, but while I was there, I realized that there that person was still with me kind of far away in this huge bubble. And if I had the courage, then I knew I could have breathed. So like it was a bubble of air. And you know, it was like this weird experience because while I was there, I knew the waves and there was turbulence all around me of this, these waters. But yet there was this protection where I could breathe and I had to learn to not panic but to relax and have faith and know that I can breathe because in our natural mind, we don't breathe in water, okay? 
we, we would panic. And I was amazed. And yet, I was still wondering, how am I going to get back up out of this water? And then I woke up. So uh, ever since then, I've been praying about that dream. And then so finally I had some time and I thought, well, I'm going to research the symbolism of water. I always thought that it, re it symbolizes nations and tongues and people, like a sea of people. So at first I was thinking, well, I'm in the world, which is full of people, and it's very turbulent. And as we know, it is turbulent. If the waters are people, then usually there's something encouraging going on, like the bubble of protection, where we could breathe in the midst of a storm, a huge, horrible storm. And so this is what I found out while I was researching. So bear with me, it's already nine minutes. Told you the dreams. <laughs> Please bear with me. Please listen to the whole video because it is really encouraging, okay? So in Genesis 1.1, it says, The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Right? Imagine that. The Spirit of God hovering over the waters. Now, I'm not reading all of Genesis 1.1. And then the Father made light who I believe was Jesus, to shine in the darkness. Because, you know, it was all dark and empty, right? And then in verse 6, the Lord said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. So there's like this this border, this boundary, there's water above and water below, and it was so. So God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let a dry group appear, is what I wrote, <laughs> and it was so. God, God called the dry ground land and gathered the waters he called seas, and God saw it was good. So it's interesting, right? Right away in Genesis, it talks about water. It talks about the light shining, you know, in the darkness. So the Father first separated light from the darkness and then the water from the waters. The firmament was water separating two things from each other, the waters above and the waters below. So the waters from above give life from the throne room of God, and the waters from below is the water which drown men in destruction. Right? Think about that. Now, why do I say the drowned men in destruction? Because the waters represent words, okay? The Word of God, right? They are pure from above where the throne of God is, and the water from below can lead man to destruction because of the lies, which is the abode of Satan, the inhabitant of the deep. It is referenced scripturally as Leviathan. It means the sea monster or sea dragon and it's mentioned in Revelations and the serpent at the bottom of the sea. That's Leviathan. You see the symbolism I'm trying to get at here? The purpose of Satan's lies is to distort truth. What's going on around us? There's a lot of lies, right? It's like we feel like it's increasing and increasing, right? God is truth, and Satan wants to destroy God. So if Satan can distort the truth, he can distort man's comprehension of who and what God really is. Therefore, we will not comprehend God if the, if the truth is distorted, right? 
and we will not know who to serve as man here on earth. Symbolically, Satan wants his impure waters here on earth to overwhelm man, causing him to drown. So what's that dream? The turbulent waters, right? The seas of people as well. The enemy and his lies. His lies create doubt that God's word is true, which you see happening. And you see a lot of deceptions going on in the Christian churches. A ton of lies in the Christian churches. And so when man believes the word of God, he has faith. Faith in God is destroyed when the lie comes, where it takes truth and casts it down to the ground. So who's the truth? We know it's Jesus, right? That truth, that light, cast it down to the ground in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the lies, in the sea of destruction. Okay? Satan attempted to do this at the crucifixion of Jesus. He who was the truth, right? He tried to take his reign. Satan did. But Jesus rose from the dead and became the victor over sin and the grave. Didn't he? So Satan's plan got messed up. And Satan's water of destruction, though, still exists here on earth. And he could still spread his lies. Thus, the big crashing tsunami waves. <laughs> Yuck! <laughs> However, there's still a limit, right? Because there's that limit, that boundary that I was telling you about in Genesis. But also in Jeremiah 5.22, it says, Jesus said, God said, sorry, the Lord said, Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will you not tremble at my presence? Who has placed the sand for the boundary of the sea by a per perpetual degree that it cannot pass it. And through the wave, though the waves of it toss themselves, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, they cannot pass over it. Isn't that interesting? So the Lord is saying here that he set that boundary. It's symbolic of the expression of Satan's water as a boundary. No matter how hard Satan tries to spread his lies, imagine that without a boundary to the sea of deception, he would be able to overflow the earth once again, and then we would be back to Genesis when the earth was void and without form. Think about that. So then go on in the water studies, right? We have Jonah in uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. He is a representation of the water is a prophecy to the time of Jesus' death. Okay, now I'm going to read this. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell I cried, and you heard my voice, for you had cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas, and the floods surrounded me. Sounds like my dream, right? Okay? Think about it. Okay? And the days of Noah. But all your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of your sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The water surrounded me, even to the soul. The deep closed around me. The deep. Satan comes from the depths, right? The reeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. So think about that. How deep did he go in the belly of that huge fish, which is Leviathan? I think a symbol of this. The earth will, with her bars was about me forever. Yet have you brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. 
so he was brought out of the fish's belly and spewed out on the dry ground. Jesus became sin for us and experienced being drawn down into the depths, the waters of destruction at the time of his death. The reeds or the grasses growing in the waters that wraps them around the head in order to pull him down to destruction. The great fish was referred to as the belly of hell, the Leviathan, that sea monster who swallows everyone and dies for their and they die for their own sins, right? Okay, Leviathan, Satan, sea monster, dragon, serpent. He swallows him up, right? If it wasn't for Jesus rising from the dead and overcoming the power of death, we would all suffer that same fate, right? We would be swallowed up by Leviathan. No one has the power in themselves to overcome Satan's lies, for Satan's lies will overcome everyone and drown them into the sea of destruction. As Jonah was spewed up onto dry ground, so Jesus could not be held in the deep by Satan. So think about this. This is all water. Jesus is the only one who has total power over the impure waters. So there was that protection, that angel with me among the storm and the waters, right? The Word of God. The Word of God can overcome every lie. Then the next thing was that Jesus walked on the water right? He rules over the people. He reigns as Lord over the nations, just like the water gives life to the plants and life itself. So does Jesus. He is the living water. The water cannot overwhelm him because he's walking on the water. In Jesus, there is no doubt, only truth, no lies. So back in Jonah, he talked about the bars that keep back the water. So the water itself is imprisoned in its place and cannot escape. That boundary would keep the lies, the impure waters, from overspreading the earth and destroying the earth. Satan's lies still contaminate our understanding as men of the truth, but cannot contaminate the truth for Jesus. Jesus is the pure word of God, as the pure waters from above could not be contaminated. Right? He is the perfect truth. Jesus can tread on the water and not be pulled under by the raging waves. You understand? He overcame the raging sea of destruction. Peter, when he walked on the water, right, he had faith, and it was strong enough for him to do so because his eyes were on the Lord. But in the process, the impure waters were being tossed about by the tempest, and he allowed his attention, he looked down to be taken away, and the winds destroyed his confidence, and he began to sink. So that doubt is an example of how the lies of Satan can destroy our own faith and drown us in the seas of destruction. But Jesus reached down and he took a hold of Peter so he would not drown and be overtaken by the lies of Satan and the seas of destruction, such as the bubble that I was in in, in my vision. And, you know, that's for all of you. It's not just for me. I don't look forward to being in the turbulent sea. And I don't think any of us do. I don't know what's coming and why, like, that, you know, dream came to me. But I always ask the Lord, where are we? What's going on? You know, I'm always praying. Um, so... I have a couple other scriptures here that I am already at 23 minutes that, you know, I'm not going to really go to. Maybe just quick hit on the baptism. We get baptized in water because it cleanses from our sins, 
we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Moses split the water in two to pass out of Egypt the nation so the Hebrews can walk towards freedom but the waters crashed down on the Egyptians a nation of people right he separated the people from you know with the water from one nation to another so the beast rising out of the sea the Satan rises out of the sea in Revelations 13 1 which is the Leviathan, the dragon, the beast, and the sea of destruction. Ah, interesting, huh? He comes out of there. He's corrupt. It, he comes out of there. It also can be like a corrupt system for multitudes, nations, and tongues in Revelation 17, 15. So out of the sea, right, we are protected. There's also, though, that living water that comes out of Jerusalem in Zechariah 14.8, right? Um, I have also here, is the sea came up upon Babylon, covered with a multitude of waves. Interesting, right? You know what Babylon is, and is represented as the sea coming upon her. That's the sea of lies and destruction of Satan coming upon her with a multitude of waves. So I'm getting the idea that these waves, these strong turbulent storms, is the sea of destruction of Satan and his lies. For cities have been brought into desolation in Jeremiah 51, 42, and 43. Okay. So also the sea is in judgment of evil, right? The second angel poured out his vial into the sea and it became as blood and every living soul in the sea died in revelation 16 3 then the second angel sounded a trumpet and a mountain was cast into the sea the nations and a one-third became as blood and one-third part died and one-third of the ships were destroyed as in revelations 8 8 through 9 and i see here the ships are the trade goods of satan and causes men to succumb to the waters of destruction by enticing them to his waters with the trinkets of the earth, right? The trinkets are of gold, silver, precious jewels, automobiles, anything that's of the flesh. <laughs> they come to the coastal cities where they are traded to move them closer to the sea of destruction, like that enticement, right? until finally Satan is able to get him close enough to reach out with the waves and drag them into the deep. So it's like being tossed to and fro, right? And then my final thing, well, a little bit more, just bear with me. I don't know what I'm gonna put up here, it's such a long video. Like in the days of Noah, right? The last days, in Genesis 6, five through eight, it says, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I had made them. And then Noah has, I mean, God has compassion, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So you know the story. He told Noah to build a boat, and then the Lord sent a flood of destruction upon the earth because of their evil. And so I feel like sometimes in my dream, it's representing being encompassed in the evil days, full of lies, but yet we as believers are protected. We're with the Lord in the Word, right? With the light in the days of darkness. And there also there's mercy intertwined, right? Because God had mercy on Noah, he had mercy on Jonah, 
He has mercy on us in the midst of all this. Okay? So the storm rocks the boat on the Sea of Galilee. The ships are filled and start to sink. They become weighted down in water. In the last days, perilous times will come. Men will become lovers of men. Right? You know the scripture. The sinking habits falling back into the world. Pain and terrible times as in the crashing of the waves, the temptations, Satan, the fallen nature, and the material world. Yet in that sea, the Lord or an angel was with me. He is our salvation. For Jesus calmed the storm. The Father rules the raging of the sea. We are at risk of the wind and the waves of the great sea, the sea of lies, that great sea of destruction. But Jesus saves us from the storm, his church and his people. The deep is the abyss where evil lies, yet they can show God's mercy, love through his salvation. So that's all the good news, right? Back to the belt dream. How is this connected? It all starts with the truth. In Ephesians 6, 12-14, says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, the waves, the turbulent waters. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Now that's really like done everything to stand, I repeat. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist before you put on the breastplate of righteousness in place. But that belt of truth is Jesus Christ. And no lie can overshadow the lightness of the truth. So I hope this helped you. This must be, you know, like for us to keep our eyes and ears open and to really stand firm and have done everything to stand and be strong in these days. I don't know what's ahead. You know, there's rumors all the time of this and that and viruses and locusts going on <laughs> there's a lot going on out there guys there's peace talks tumbling there's elections all over the place in both israel and america there's a lot going on folks love you all god bless you